Hi, welcome to another video that's part of the Parent and Carer Programme Supporting Youth Anxiety. My name is Warren Matowski and I'm one of the CAM psychologists. And I'm Ruth Sequeira, part of the East Sussex Primary Mental Health Work Team. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the announcement. The announcement is a way that parents and carers can let the child they are supporting know about their intention to make some changes. Now, it may be that you've got the first stages of a plan together, or it could be that you're not sure what's going to be in the plan, but the announcement is about letting the child know about your intentions to make some changes. Um, the reason why it's recommended you use this idea of an announcement, something that's a bit more formal, is that it's likely to be really different from day-to-day -day family life. I know in my family, I don't stand up and kind of make announcements. I can imagine how my kids kind of might respond to that. So it is about doing something a bit different. And this formality allows you um, to plan in advance exactly what you are going to say. So we would recommend that you find a calmer time to inform your child. Um, and when you're informing them, um, you offer understanding and confidence and you explain the changes that you'll be making or that you, you explain that you are going to be making some changes and you'll let them know what they are at a later time. In terms of making this announcement, you're not seeking agreement. This isn't persuasion or a negotiation. You're simply and calmly letting the child know that you are going to make some changes. You may choose to let your child know that they are going to be a big part of this change. But remember that you're not seeking approval. You don't need their permission to make some changes in how you respond to their anxiety driven behavior. We recommend that you don't force them to listen. And if they keep walking away, don't chase necessarily chase after them and, and um, make them be an audience for you. You might write it down the announcement for them to read later and put it under their door. And any, any questions about that, Ruth? Anything that doesn't sound clear or just sounds a bit odd about it? No, I mean, I guess I was just thinking that quite often when we talk about change as parents, it can be when we're feeling really frustrated and run down and things have been quite difficult and we can just have a kind of like, oh, things need to change around here, that kind of approach. And so here we're trying to do something different where we're really kind of planning this in advance. We know what we want to say. We're very kind of firm about what we want to say. We find the right time to do it with our child where things are calm, not when things have just been really awful. Um, so, that, so that, yeah, we're really kind of setting aside some time to really kind of quite formally say things are going to change. Yeah. And I think that planning bit is really important because when we plan ahead, when we're going to say it, we might think about, do we need some support to make this announcement, whether it's a partner, other family member, family friend, because as we talk about in other sessions in this workshop, often having other people around can reduce the chance of things escalating. So what do you put in an announcement? So we've included this just to give you um, an example of, of what you might Put in an announcement. So I'm going to kind of read it out and, and then we'll discuss the different elements. So we might start off by saying we know how difficult it is for you to get on with things in your life. We understand that it makes you feel really anxious or afraid. We want you to know that everyone can experience such fears. But we also want you to know that it's our job as your parents and people in your family to help you get better at things that are hard for you. And we've decided to do exactly that. We're gonna be working on this for a while and we know it will probably take time, but we love you too much not to help you when you need help. Soon we'll talk again and we'll have some ideas about what will make you better at handling those difficult situations. We love you and are really proud of you. And that's why we want to make some changes. So you'll see kind of building into the announcement is why you're doing it. We're doing this because we love you. So you're expressing that understanding, but you're also showing some confidence that um, you're gonna be doing things that will help them move through some process of change. 
Any thoughts or things you want to add there, Ruth? No, just I, I know it can be quite hard for parents, carers to sort of make these announcements and it can feel sometimes like they're being sort of quite harsh in doing this. And I think so it's really important to have to be sure in yourself about why you're making these changes and it is because you care about your child and you want the best for them um you love them and you you lack real kind of confidence we know that we know that you can do this we know that we can move on from this place that we're in at the moment um so kind of being really sure of that in yourself as a parent can help you kind of confidently and with compassion kind of um give this announcement yeah i think it's hard i think parents can often feel really anxious or concerned about kind of making these announcements. And, th and that's why we see it as that first step of kind of reducing accommodation and doing something that is in your child's best interest. So um, it's useful when planning your announcement to think about how your child will respond. What will they do when you make your announcement? What will they do the first time you reduce accommodation? And when they react, how are you going to feel? And how uh, might you respond if you're challenged by your child? And if they're challenging you when you make the announcement or when you start to reduce accommodation, what might support look like in that situation? Again, we would suggest building into your plan what you're going to do um, when you make the announcement and uh, the child might react in quite a challenging or very kind of strong way to kind of what you're saying and thinking about how you might deal with that. Yeah, so I guess typical responses you might get is um, a young person looking like they're not listening to you at all, kind of on their phone or um, rolling their eyes, looking the other way or starting to get into that kind of discussion with you around, yeah, you don't understand how difficult this is for me or why are you doing this to me? Those kind of um, responses or just leaving the room. Um, so yeah, it's, it's worth thinking through beforehand how you will respond to that and just really staying strong in yourself about why you're doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's a good point about thinking about why you're doing it because the idea is we don't need them to show that they've listened. We don't need them to repeat it back to us. Our job is to communicate that. What they do with it is a separate matter with the announcement. Obviously we want them to hear, but we don't have to force them to hear. We're just, we're not just, it's, it's a difficult thing to do, but we're, we're communicating what we plan to do. Um, and quite often young people are taking things in quite, even when they're, they're not necessarily wanting to show that they're taking things in. So um, if they're looking elsewhere or um, yeah, looking at the phone or something, it doesn't mean that they're actually not listening and they're not sort of taking in the kind of tone of what you're saying as well, that this is kind of serious and that you're, you, you've decided to make some changes. And I suppose the other thing is don't make it go on necessarily too long. You make your announcement if they kind of walk away, maybe you can put a note under their door or send it in an email or kind of text and then kind of move on. Um, just wanted to run through uh, some things that other parents and carers that have been through this program have found helpful and certain things that we would kind of recommend in trying to keep things calm and to de-escalate kind of conflict. Um, the first bit of advice, and you would have heard this in the in the, in the live sessions that we've had, is to manage your own anxiety and other emotions. And also think about delaying your response. If your child is highly anxious or angry or upset, they won't be able to take on what you're saying. And often continuing discussion can leave the child with the hope that you'll change your mind. So if when you make your announcement, you get the yes, but what about, um, we would advise to be careful about getting drawn into that. You're not getting into a negotiation, you're setting out what you're kind of planning to do. And in terms of that verbal back and forth, what we often find is the less you respond, the more quickly the emotion will subside. So if the child is seemingly trying to pull you into debate or a discussion, we would recommend trying to disengage from that discussion, create some distance, um, and try and de-escalate the kind of conflicts that's coming up. And I suppose lastly, and most importantly, we want to say, be kind to yourself. Changing how we behave is really hard and really slow. 
So before we wrap up this video, anything else um, you want to add in there, Ruth? No, just this the importance really of that, yeah, managing your own anxiety as a parent and being kind to yourself. So in a similar way as with the young person, if they're highly anxious, they can't actually sort of think clearly. Um, it'll be the same for you as a parent. So yeah, choosing choosing a time and managing your own anxiety during the process to kind of, and actually having that idea of, I'm just going to say this and then that's the end of the conversation can help with that as well so yeah even if you're getting lots of kind of different responses back from the young person you can deal with that at a different time when maybe your anxiety levels are lower as well and you calm calmed yourself down and and really sort of um giving yourself a bit of um, acknowledgement afterwards that you've done that because actually it's, it, these are quite difficult things to do um can be helpful thank you so um that's what we wanted to say about the announcement. We'll get a chance to talk it through at the next um, live session online. And yeah, just want to end by wishing you well. Okay, thanks.